Hello Internet. Welcome to the second video of the Touch Designer Audio Reactive series. In this video, we will focus on creating a synchronized sound response. We'll use only a part of the mid frequencies from the sound you previously heard to create a deeper dialogue with the visual response. We'll be using Ray TK. If you're not familiar with this tool, please check the link in the comments. If you're new to Touch Designer, I also recommend checking the second link in the comments. Let's start by building the network. Chapter 1 Ray TK Network. First, find a wave field and drag it into the network. Next, find a rescale field and connect it directly. Now, let's find a float to vector and connect the output of the wave field to the first input of the float to vector. Then, find a spiral pattern and connect it as follows. Move the network here to make space. Find a project plane and connect it. Create a rescale float field. Move the network down to make space. Then create a combine field because we want to combine two more fields that we'll create next. Create another wave field and copy paste it here. Connect the three fields to the combine field in the following order. Keep moving the network to the right. Now bring in the most important element for this composition, a plane SDF. This surface will be manipulated by the wave fields we created earlier. Place it here and connect it to the first input of the link. Next, we need a modular material for textures. Connect it to the first input of the material module. Create a diffuse followed by a specular contributor and connect them as shown. Now we need the final components to visualize our 3D composition. Create a Ray March Render 3D and add a Look at Camera. Then, create two point lights. Place the first light here and duplicate it downwards. Combine the two lights using a multi-light operator. Connect the lights as shown. Finally, connect the camera to the second input and the lights to the third input. Now we have the entire network ready. Chapter 2. Touch Designer Network. Next, we'll create a network with some native Touch Designer operators. It's a minimal setup but very efficient for general post-processing. First, Insert a null operator and connect the first output of the ray march to the null. Go to Palette, Image Filters, and find Convolve. Drag it into the network. It's one of my most used filters for creating metallic and crystalline textures. Finally, add another null here. Perfect. Create a composite operator and connect the null to the composite as well. To finish this simple network, create an out at the end. Now let's ensure all the resolutions are set according to our composition or desired output. Select the composite operator and, in the common tab, use the parent panel size option. Perfect. Go to the parent panel size outside and set the resolution. I always work in this resolution, but you can use whichever you prefer. Keep in mind that when setting camera parameters, different resolutions might require other values. Set the resolution to 1080 by 1920 pixels. Chapter 3, Audio Reactive Network. Now, let's create the final network for the audio reactive part. This will be a simple network, so let's start. Create an audio file in and connect an audio device out. Go to Touch Designer Palette, Tools, and find Audio Analysis. Drag it into the network and connect as follows. Insert a select operator. 
create a trail above the select. Create a math operator and connect it below the select. Next, insert an analyze operator. Duplicate this analysis and connect the math here too. Insert a logic operator after the analyze chop and create a timer chop without connecting it for now. Now, create a mini network that will clone eight times. Start by inserting a math operator followed by a lag and finish with a null. Select the entire network and copy it eight times. Now rename these nodes to avoid confusion later. Amp, period. Amp2, Amp3, diffuse level. Cam X, Cam Y. We don't need the last one, so you can delete it. Perfect. This is the entire network. Chapter four, parameters. Now, let's parameterize the values of this network. Select the wave field and use these parameters. We'll use sine and select distance from origin in coordinates axis. Use 2D and copy these values. Now, go to the rescale field and use these values. Leave the vector flow as it is. Go to the spiral pattern and select these values. Select Project Plane and choose YZ in Plane. Select the Rescale Float field and use these values. Continue copying these values in the wave field. We have two of them. Use the following parameters for the wave fields. Select Cosine again, Distance from Origin, and copy these parameters. Select the combine field and ensure add is selected in the operation mode. In the plane SDF, use these parameters. Select Z axis for this operator. Set offset to minus one. Go to diffuse contribution and select these values. For color, I'll use this one, but feel free to try different colors later. Select Lambert and keep default parameters. For specular, use these values. For now, I'll select a dark color for the light, but we'll modify this later. Go to the modular mat, enable ambient occlusion and reflections. Now, the most important part, seeing our composition. Go to the camera and set the position. Use these values. Next, Go to the first point light and use these values. Change intensity to four and turn on attenuation and copy these parameters. Now we see the shape we want. Go to the second light, set these intensity values and choose a blue color. We'll modify this later. Leave the multi-light values as default. Let's modify one parameter in the Touch Designer network. Go to the composite operator and use pin light blending mode. Finally, we'll parameterize the values in the network for the audio reactive part. Leave the audio analysis for now and manipulate it at the end. Activate only the mid frequencies and turn off the rest. Go to the select operator and use only mid frequencies.
go to the first math operator and copy these parameters. Select Analyze and use Maximum. Select the second Analyze and use Maximum as well. Go to Logic and ensure Off when zero is selected. Go to the timer. In Output, select Time Fraction. Turn off the rest. Now, copy the range mappings for each math operator. Select all the lag operators at once and copy these parameters for all. Select only the first lag and change the values as follows. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank you all for watching and subscribing to my channel. Reaching over 2K subscribers in just one month is beyond my wildest expectations. I'm excited that so many of you are enjoying my content. However, I noticed that 76.9% of viewers haven't subscribed yet. If you found my videos helpful or inspiring, please hit that subscribe button. It's a small gesture that makes a huge difference in helping me create more high quality touch designer tutorials. Let's reduce that number, thank you. Chapter five, animation and mapping values. Okay, let's animate some RayTK parameters and reference the chops from the audio network to the parameters we want to give motion. Select the first wave and press Shift-Alt-R. In the menu, choose Animate with Speed and select Phase. Order the network a little bit. Now go to the following wave field, press Shift-Alt-R, and again, choose Animate with Speed and select Phase. These are the only animations we needed for now. Now let's map the values of the chop operators as follows. Rename the first chop called Amp to Period and map this value to the period of the second wave field we created. Map the next operator to the wave field 3 as follows. Select AMP2 and map it to the amplitude of the second wave field. Perfect. You may not see a response yet. Don't worry. This is because we haven't adjusted the necessary parameters in the audio analysis tool and we need to map the logic to the timer but we'll cover that soon. Meanwhile, continue with the mapping. Map Amp 3 to the amplitude of Wave Field 3. Map the diffuse level to the diffuse level as shown. Lastly, map cam X and cam Y to control the camera movement with the sound. Reference these values as follows. Chapter six, audio analysis and tweaks. We'll configure the audio analysis tool and map the key operator to make the audio react as desired. Adjust the audio analysis by moving the threshold until you see a reaction in the frequency. Additionally, increase the smooth values to avoid abrupt reactions. Check the select operator to ensure the mid frequencies are being used. Here's what we need to do. Each time the frequency triggers, it will set the logic to one. We want to avoid using the raw frequency values due to their irregularity. Instead, We'll replace them with a timer value for a smoothly interpolated motion, and it will create a more interesting curve when combined with the lag operators. Set the timer as follows. Use a length of four seconds 
and map the logic to start. Each time the frequency triggers, the logic will activate, starting the timer for a four second duration. The length of the animation, I want. Now we only need to make a few simple tweaks to the network to achieve the final composition. Go to the mini network that animates the phase of the wave field and map the same value to this wave field. Next, go to the specular settings and adjust the roughness and Fresnel levels as follows. Set the FOV angle to 100 in the look at camera settings. Perfect. Remember, you can adjust the camera angles to your liking. This one works well for me. Select all the lag operators and enable the clamp slope option. The clamp slope option limits the maximum rate of change slope of the output value, ensuring smoother transitions by restricting how quickly the value can increase or decrease. Feel free to experiment with the point light tones and textures. They play a significant role in defining different styles and emotions. If you want subtler tones, use low intensity point lights and adjust until you find something you like. I'll activate the audio now so you can experience how it feels with the sound. It may seem odd to see it without audio, but I'm using a single sound to trigger this movement and thought it might be distracting to hear it continuously. Excellent. Now I'd like to explain what's happening in this network. Fields in GLSL are used to influence various attributes across a surface or space through shaders. In Cinema 4D, fields work with effectors and deformers. Fields allow you to redefine and blend different areas and shapes, providing precise and flexible control over effects and animations. This makes it easier to create complex and dynamic visual effects. Fields can be layered and combined to produce intricate and highly customizable results. In this network, we combine three fields with different parameters to create intricate designs within the spiral pattern used as the initial deformation on a plane. I recommend disconnecting some of the audio reactive mappings and manually playing with the three wave fields. You'll immediately see how they manipulate the surface more clearly. For example, Changing the axis to which the field is applied will yield extremely interesting results. It's a simple way to learn more about the wave field. In summary, this composition is just a plane manipulated by three fields of almost the same nature. Texture and lighting is a broad topic that depends heavily on personal preference. Experiment with various options to understand how they affect patterns and evoke emotions. Lastly, the point lights create different sensations but operate differently from textures, just like using a flashlight on an object the distance and color of the light affect the reflected color on the surface. These point lights simulate these physical phenomena, so adjust their values accordingly. Please leave your comments if you have questions or succeeded with the tutorial. Remember the project file is available on Patreon. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon. Thank you.